Have you ever wondered how many stars are there in the universe? Well, scratch that. Have you ever wondered how much light all the stars in the universe has produced in the entire history of the universe? Well, astronomers just figured out that answer. This is Kainati Gapsha. Our universe is 13.8 billion years old. By comparison, our own star, uh, the sun, uh, has existed for only four and a half billion years. And it is just one star. Our estimate is that there are close to a trillion, trillion stars in our universe. And the first of these stars formed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Well, if you've ever wondered how much light or how many photons, which are particles of light, have all these stars produced in the entire history of the universe? Well, astronomers now have the number. And the number is, well, four times 10 to the power 84. Uh, which uh, in human terms would be written as four, then followed by 84 zeros. This is an insanely large number. And in fact, I don't have a good comparison to give you to understand that number. But what we can talk about is how did astronomers figured that the total number of photons is this huge? Well, they came up with a clever way of measuring starlight. You can imagine the starlight as uh, some sort of fog. Uh, and in this particular case, you can think of it as a cosmic fog. It just sounds cooler. Now imagine that you have flashlights at different distances in this fog. The flashlight that is farther away from you would be dimmed more because of the fog compared to the flashlight that is closer to you. Well, in the same way, astronomers figured out that there are these objects that are called blazars can act as a cosmic flashlight. Blazars are galaxies that have supermassive black holes in the center. And in the, around these black holes, there's material that is going around and falling into this black hole. But before it falls around, it forms an accretion disk. And this accretion disk has extremely high magnetic fields. And that can accelerate protons and neutrons and also generate high energy photons in a form of these jets that can go across thousands of light years. Now, some of these jets can point towards the Earth. I mean, there are different orientations and some of them away from us. For those galaxies with supermassive black holes whose jets point towards the Earth, we call them blazars. And they emit high energy photons, high energy form of light called gamma rays. Now, here is the thing. These gamma rays, which is just a form of light, is just high energy light, even though they sound super villain type thing, gamma rays, but this is just a form of light. When they interact with light photons created by stars, it produces uh, two particles and basically the light, the gamma rays don't get to us. And now in some ways, this is like the flashlight in the fog and some of the light is getting absorbed. Now, astronomers have detected 739 blazars, and they used a Fermi gamma ray telescope to measure light from these, uh, from these galaxies, from these blazars, and measured it depending upon their distance from us to the blazars. The closest of these blazars is uh, about a few million, 200 million light years from us. 
but the farthest one is 11.6 billion light years away. That means that the light from that blazar getting to us, uh, it started its journey when the universe was only 2 billion years old. Using the light absorption between the farther objects and the closer blazars, astronomers came up with the number of four times 10 to the power 84 photons because all of this light has been absorbed by starlight. Well, but why do we care about this number? Well, it is not the number specifically that we care about, but astronomers are interested in the rate at which stars have been forming in the universe. Has it been constant? Has it been higher before or lower before? What is the rate? Well, as it turns out, astronomers have found that the universe was forming stars at the highest rate when it was only 3 billion years old. Me, you, the Earth, and the Sun at that time were not there. Since then, since that peak, the star formation has been going down and down and down. And today, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, the rate of star formation is only a few percent of its peak. That doesn't mean that there are no stars being formed. We have Orion Nebula, you have beautiful star forming regions in our own galaxy and in other galaxies. But overall, the star formation rate is going down and down and it will keep on going down until in perhaps a trillion years the universe will have no more formation of stars and it will end up as being a dark universe. Well, it sounds a bit depressing, but to cheer you up, I'm going to say that I think it is really cool that some inhabitants of an ordinary star on a planet orbiting this star that wasn't even there when there was peak star formation. They have figured out and they, that how, what is the rate of star formation and they've also predicted this cold, dark future of the entire universe. And I think that is the coolest part about uh, this discovery. Please subscribe uh, to Kainati Gupshap. Uh, you can find subscribe button over here or on the side. Uh, but please uh, we keep on making videos. In order to get the new one, please subscribe to wherever the button for subscription is.